All right, Michael, uh, what risks and benefits do you see AI bringing to the way people use Data Vault in the future? Okay, um, so I would say that um, there's, a, there's a, some hype around AI, right? So um, there's this assumption that uh, AI can solve everything now. It's well, that's questionable, right? <laughs> so, um, I mean, AI makes mistakes. AI simulates or emulates a naturalist or actually learns from past decisions. So um, if you have, um, um, let's say, humans making past decisions, it will learn from that. But what if AI makes a past decisions? What if you manipulate past decisions, right? So there's also a risk that there might be um, AI-driven decisions which are plain wrong. And we have to, uh, we have to essentially um, uh, think about that one and, and um, uh, in, in the solution adjust for that, essentially. Um, that's number one. And, but on the other hand, um, you, I mean, think about this. Without AI, we see more and more data. And there's an exponential growth of data at the moment, right? So and, and, and even in the past and in the future. Data volume grows exponentially because we're producing more and more data, AI is now producing more data, and so on. There's more and more data available, and we need to analyze this data. But on the other hand, when you look at the universities, there's only a um, essentially a, a linear, uh, scalable um, number of new uh, people coming into the industry and will not raise. It, it will not grow exponentially how many students come out of it, right? So there's only a limited number of students who pass the uh, final exams and become um, a data scientists. And how do we deal with this? There's a gap, and this, this gap is widening because the data, more and more data is available, and only a number of new data scientists, new data professionals come into the, into the market, essentially. So we got a structural problem for the future. That's, that's an issue. And we can only solve this, this, this gap or close this gap to some extent with the use of AI. It's not killing jobs. It's really uh, just dealing with the, the, the ever-growing um, uh, volume of data, essentially. Absolutely. I agree. Noles, have you got any AI-related uh, uh, how to govern the answers that AI produce is a hot topic. Uh, and mm -hmm. so the guiding and governing the, the results and having a reliable, consistent answer coming back, particularly uh, just because AI is a hot topic doesn't mean that governance and oversight and those type of things will reduce. In fact, it'll increase dramatically because of the influence of AI and now, what is real and what's not real and what's manufactured or not manufactured uh, becomes a real uh, challenge. And organizations, so, but I didn't make that decision, but you, it looks like you did. And so the, mm. the, the, the governance, the how to guide your large language models or your AI initiatives will become more and more uh, a hot topic, and I think Data Vault offers actually a unique opportunity in that because relationships are explicitly provided as a structure or as a known within the data set, you can start training your AI models or your AI engines to recognize those as the guide rails, the tracks on which this train needs to deliver the goods on, and only on this track. And so uh, because it's actually the intersection of all the processes, the assumptions, the the correlations within your data is around those elements. Security. So, one, one last comment. Um, I agree. The, the thing is, um, when your organization is making decisions, either by humans or with AI, nobody cares that AI made the decision. You are responsible as an organization. So you really want to make sure that the models are essentially... Um, well, you want to watch watch what the AI is deciding. Essentially, you want to monitor that, and and I mean, a, a single decision by the AI, you're responsible. Period. There's no way around that. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been doing a lot of reading in this for you know just uh, for our strategic team, and um, you know, it's it's really interesting because if you ask a question, uh, maybe if you ask how many points are left on my license in Australia, we have points on our license, and when they run out, your license is cancelled, uh, so don't speed. Um, and so. If I was using an AI and I asked that question, how many points are left on my license? Obviously, it needs to understand the context of, you know, the license, the points, you know, to understand the context of the question I'm asking. But it also needs to go and get a specific number, and that number isn't going to be stored in a content store of text of documents. It's going to need to get that from the warehouse. So, so there's definitely a benefit, I think, in in the way Data Vault, you know, can as Knowles was saying, manage the relationship, but also deliver actual facts to the AI to then 
say, well, yes, mm -hmm. I understand your question, and also here is your answer. And I think that I think that that's um, a big part of it. It is amazing what ChatGPT can do around, you know, mm -hmm. write a paragraph around how awesome Data Vault is or, or, or whatever else. But if you think about it from a business perspective, it is going to be a combination of that conversational context as well as specific facts. And those facts need to be delivered from a transactional set of data. And so I think mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the question was actually, you know, what, what benefits could AI bring to Data Vault? But I think there's a huge benefit in what Data Vault can bring to AI implementations yep. from the you know, you know, yes. security and Agreed. auditability and the delivery of yep. the relationships and the delivery of those, those facts. Yeah, one comment on that one on that line. Um, we use uh, in data mining projects, we use uh, CRISPDM, which is essentially an agile approach for data mining. And that, uh, that works perfect. It's perfectly aligned with the agile approach in data vault. Because as a data scientist, as a data mining specialist, I need more and more data sprint by sprint. So I don't know which attribute I need uh, eventually, right? So I'm building some model, a first shot with some data from the data warehouse, some raw data, some clean data, which is all available in the data warehouse. But then I go back, I, I see, look at the model. I want to improve it. So I go back to the data and ask for more, essentially. More yep. raw data, more clean data, process data, and so on. So having established this cycle is great. And that that's works well with Data Vault because you can quickly produce more, more raw data, more, more clean data, prepare the data, load the data in feature stores, and give it essentially to the, to the data scientists. Yeah, absolutely. And we already, you know, we've had multiple conversations around, you know, the ability to audit and deliver lineage and be... Be sure that the the value you're looking at is actually correct. Well, you know, we can actually extend that to say the value that the AI delivered as a part of its answer mm -hmm. was actually correct, and we can show where that came from. So there's yeah, there's it, it's it's a big question because obviously there is going to be AI that helps us do data vaults, um, you know, mm -hmm. in some way, uh, in some yeah. form. We all know that that's gonna that's gonna be there to help us all as data engineers. Mm -hmm. um, but also there is a huge part that we're seeing as far as data vault is going to help AI to actually be uh, yep. reliable. Um, so, so it's an interesting future.